On the 29th of April, 2020, Skeppies shocked the world by winning two grand from Skeppies Extreme 100 Corners event. The event is a choose the right corner type game where random corners are eliminated by droppers. It's a game of chance, and this win would have been nothing out of the ordinary had it not been that only 10 days earlier, Skeppies had won another one grand from the same event, just 50 corners. Needless to say, Skeppy and his viewers were shocked. Look at it! I it's did! Legit. It is legit! It is legit! Of Push course it's mind. legit! 3, 2, 1. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? What? I don't believe it! I don't what believe it! What is this? No way! What is no this? Way. Dude, what is there's this? no way! And while it was a bit suspicious, they just wrote it off as very good luck. Until it happened again. On June 25th, two months later, Skeppy has got the top 50 in extreme 14 corners. Due to these absurd circumstances, Skeppy began live streaming the event to prove to himself and to others that it wasn't false. Skeppy's continued to climb to the last 21 people, where he actually chose the wrong corner and got eliminated. But here's the crazy part. Skeppies had already gathered a reputation in the event community and had amassed a few followers throughout the ongoing event. And when he got out, him and his followers did. And the total dropped from 21 players to 7 players, losing exactly 14 people. The most iconic meme of Skeppies' YouTube channel. Whether this was purposeful or not is up for interpretation. But while the odds were against it, Skeppies winning twice in a row is really just good luck, as droppers are completely unbiased and random. Or are they? What if I told you in fact droppers are very predictable and predicting their behavior is quite easy? If you aren't that knowledgeable on the subject like I was and still am, it'd blow your mind. So today, I intend to teach you that as best I can, the mechanics behind droppers and how to predict their so-called randomness. So if you want to be able to easily do things like this and probably impress your friends too, I recommend that you stick around to the end of the video to find out how. But all that said, I hope you enjoy. Just before I begin though, I'd like to quickly thank Matthew Bolin, Neil, and Captain Wutex. These guys are the awesome geniuses behind what I show you today, and without their incredible help, I'd be completely stuck as to how this all works. They really helped me through it and gave a ton of advice, so thank you so much, I'm very grateful. If you're into this type of stuff, or just want to help me show gratitude, I highly recommend subscribing to their YouTube channels, which are all linked below. But that said, let's get into it. Throughout Minecraft history, since their introduction, droppers have been the basis for randomizers in Minecraft. The most basic randomizer looks like this. It involves two items of choice in the dropper, one stackable and one non-stackable. Stackable items input a weaker pulse strength than unstackable ones, allowing you to make this very clever system that gives a random output based on which item is chosen. And since droppers are random, the system is very good for a 50-50. Or is it? Well, no, it isn't. Minecraft is a game, it's coded, and randomizers follow suit. Droppers don't produce true random numbers, they're pseudo-random, and they are picked somehow. But how? Well, before we get to that, as well as how to predict it, let's address some other not-so-random randomizers first. Something that I've seen a surprising amount of people talk about is spawn randomness. When you get out of your Minecraft bed, or respawn anchor in the nether, it sends you to a random location. Or so I've been told. However, this is actually false, and there are certain spots with higher priority that dictate where you respawn. With a respawn anchor, for example, you can think of its range as such. From testing with the latest snapshot, the earlier color in the rainbow has more priority. So in this picture, red wool has the highest priority of respawn, if it's block, then orange, then yellow, then so forth, until right on top of the respawn anchor. If all these spots are blocked, you'll respawn back in the overworld. You can also go downwards two blocks, and the location is still prioritized as shown before. Similarly, with a bed, you also have a spiral motion of spawning priority, where red is the first place the bed tries to spawn you, followed by orange, then yellow. Another thing commonly referenced as random is chorus fruit. Chorus fruit have an 8x8x8 range of teleportation, and are quote, random with their picking. A bit skeptical, I decided to test it out. I made a void world with a grid, and whenever I landed on a block eating from the center, I would increase its color by one further in the rainbow, then switch to wool. After running the experiment 64 times, here are the results. As you can see, the distribution is relatively uniform, with the maximum number of times a spot was landed on being 5 of 64. 
which is quite a bit, but does indeed prove that this is most likely random. Most likely. Because chances are, if you go into the game code, chorus fruits rely on the same pseudo-random generators that droppers rely on, thus also making them somewhat predictable. Another quote random thing is Minecraft's world generation. World generation is a subject that I'm not very qualified to speak of, but again, it's all decided by code, and the placement of structures, loot, and everything is to some extent predictable. Different parts of the seed have different impacts on your world. The most unique random generation is that of terrain, which is formed using Perlin noise. Perlin noise is a very cool subject and it's a type of smooth random number generation. While looking at a graph of random numbers, you remember this jagged, uneven random pattern. However, take a look at Perlin noise and it's far more natural while still being unpredictable. That's not to say it's impossible to guess what's coming up, but this algorithm is certainly one of the most random parts in all of Minecraft. The final randomizer I want to touch on is a chicken randomizer. A chicken randomizer involves a chicken and two pressure plates. The chicken AI decides when to walk, and when it switches pressure plates, a new output is formed. Regretfully, while this randomizer may be very good depending on chicken AI, it actually sucks because it's too random. This randomizer doesn't give the user a choice when it switches, it kind of just does its own thing. If you want it to give you a random value, it can't on command. The chicken AI decides when to move, and where. So again, for our purposes, it's too random, as you can't query it. But now, let's return to droppers. I'm about to go a bit deep into code, so before I do, let me show you just how cool this code is as an incentive to stay. What is widely considered as the base of Minecraft's randomization is actually very predictable. Watch. Let me create a whole new world, place a dropper, and fill it with different random wool. I predict that the order the wool will come out is as follows. Yellow, black, yellow, purple, light blue. How cool is that? We have just successfully cracked Minecraft droppers, allowing us to predict the seemingly unpredictable. But how can you do this yourself? And why can't you do this in the first place? If you just want to see how you can do this and don't really care why you can do this, skip to the time on screen. However, if you're interested in why it's all possible, then do stick around, I promise I'll get the tutorial soon. This stuff is just really cool and I think it'll be a waste not to show it to you. But that out of the way, let's crack randomness. The majority of Minecraft's randomness is built around something called a Linear Congruential Generator or an LCG. An LCG is the thing that is used to get what appears to be a random number, and understanding how it generates is the key to predicting it. Let's say you had a very basic equation, y equals x plus 5, we all know what's going on here. But let's change that a little to x equals x plus 5. If you've ever taken third grade math, you notice it is impossible, because subtracting x from both sides gets 0 equals 5, which as far as I know, isn't true. However, this statement is perfectly valid in coding. You see, the reason Minecraft's random number generation looks so random in the first place is because they keep updating their formula. You can think about it as xn plus 1 equals xn plus 5. When you first load up a world, Minecraft picks a seed for your LCG. Let's say for example it was just 1, and our LCG was x equals x plus 5. Now this isn't actually a valid LCG because they do have a strict format, but it will serve our purposes. In this case, x is our seed. We can plug in 1 for x on the right side, and our first random number is 6, 1 plus 5. Now what Minecraft does is that seed becomes a new x. So when next time you want a random number, instead of using 1, Minecraft will use 6. So our next random number will be 6 plus 5, or 11. And the next time Minecraft needs a random value, it will use 11, and our new random number will be 11 plus 5, or 16. Really good random number generators will use tons of different things like the weather, or time of day, or anything they can to make your seed values as unpredictable as possible. But for better and for worse, Minecraft doesn't bother. The equation for the Minecraft LCG is this mess. We have our seed, we multiply by this massive number, add 11, and then take mod 2 to the 48 to get the next seed. If you don't know what that is, that's okay, you don't have to know. You just know the smart people do, and they've done the hard part for us. An example of numbers taken from this LCG if we began with this number, our next one would be this one, and then this one, and so on and so forth. To the everyday player, these do look like randomly generated numbers, however, they aren't, and we know how they're actually made. 
to massively oversimplify it, if we have a seed for our Dropros LCG, we can find the random numbers that will be generated with it, and then look at Minecraft's code to find which dropper slots those random numbers correspond with. But all of that said, how can you do this yourself? Well again, since all the awesome smart people already did the work for us, all we have to do is download a few files, and trust me, it's super duper easy from there. So let's do that. The first things to download are droppercracker.zip and droppercracker.jar. Just follow the first link in the description and you can click both of them to download. For convenience, you can drag them into your desktop afterwards, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Now, right click the zip file and select extract here. If you don't have this option, you may have to download WinRAR, but I doubt it. You can then delete the compressed folder. The next step is to download an IDE. I recommend IntelliJ and to download it, just click the second link in the description and then download the community edition. You can also drag this to your desktop if you want. Now that we have these three things, it's time to install IntelliJ. Simply double click or run the exe file and then complete the setup. I already have it installed so I won't finish it, but you should. Next, open up IntelliJ and hit new project, select Java in the top left and Java version 1.8. Hit next, next, give it a title if you want and finish. After that, open the dropdown, go to source, and then make sure to make a new Java type class and give it a meaningful name. After that, head to the final link which will take you to a paste bin. Copy and paste a small chunk of code to IntelliJ and change the second line to whatever you decided to call your class. Minimize the window for now, but do keep it open. Next, go to percent, update a percent, which on Windows can be found by going to the search bar and typing that in, and on a Mac, I don't know, you have to look it up. Open up .minecraft, saves, and then drag in your droppercracker.zip, not the jar file, into your saves. The next step is to boot up Minecraft and look for the world in your world list. It should just be called Dropper Cracker. Load it up and then hit the birch button in the bottom right. You should see all the lights flash and then randomly turn on. Wait for around 30 seconds maximum and then run the jar file. Once you run it, this small window should show up and carefully click check for all the boxes that have lights on, as they correspond with the grid in the world. Once you've done this, hit crack. It should take a second, but then you should be given a number, as this is your dropper seed. Click copy and open up your IntelliJ project. Where it says your seed here, paste in the seed, and be sure to keep the L at the end or it won't work. Finally, adjust the number right here to check how far to the future you want to go. We'll go 6 future calls in. Now your code is completed and just hit the small triangle next to the second line. It should take a second, and then open up a little panel at the bottom. The numbers appearing in order from top to bottom represent the slots which the dispenser will be firing from. You can then open up a whole new world, or use that one, and it will still be consistent throughout all of your worlds. It will only break when you close Minecraft, and that's when you have to do the box checking thing again. If you want to look further into the future, just make the number larger from before. Now, in theory, there are more things you can do with this, and adjust if the droppers don't have to be full. Currently, do keep in mind, if the dropper isn't full, it will have some strange side effects, and if you're fluent enough in code, you can account for them, but I won't get into it. This wraps up the tutorial though, and I did hope it works for you. Now, all of this considered, do I think Skeppy used this to cheat in the Skeppy Corners event? While in theory, yes, it would be possible, I think it's extremely unlikely as you would have to know the dropper seed, as well as what items are in what slots of the droppers, so I do think he just legitimately got lucky. And I too consider myself lucky if you have made it to the end of this video. I sincerely hope you did enjoy, but that's all I have for today, thank you so so much for watching, and as always, peace out, have a good one.